Hi, in this video we're going to look at MIDI mapping Ableton Live into the latest versions of Gridlock. Uh, so I'm going to be demonstrating with 0.3.9 here, but the principle is the same for 0.3.5.4, so download that as soon as it becomes available in the next couple of days. I'll be demoing this on a PC, but I believe that the Mac should be fairly similar instead of having to use loop midi or a similar thing like midi yoke on the pc you should be able to use the iac drivers if someone wants to send me the details of exactly how this works on mac after they've seen this video then that'd be great and i'll update this video with some text if you do have 0.3.9 you can always use the slm mode for midi mapping in live as well which allows you to do all of this without needing max for live for the supported slm controllers I'll be putting up a video in the next few days about that. So I've just got an empty set here, I've dropped in Gridlock, I've selected Launchpad Mini which is what I'm going to be demoing on and I've created a HUD so you can see uh, what I'm doing on the controller. Also going to open up some other things which will give you some feedback on the mini mapping. You don't need these but these are available for debugging if you want to so here we're just going to see the number of subscriptions created and when we're receiving and processing MIDI information from live so as I said earlier I've created a couple of virtual MIDI ports on the PC and I've just called these gridlock live MIDI in and gridlock live MIDI out so if we look at the live mapping there Okay, so you can see I've got my Gridlock LP Mini set up to my Launchpad Mini in and out. And then I've set up the virtual input to in on track and remote. I've set up the virtual port to out on track and remote. And I've pretty much got the Launchpad set up as normal, except I haven't activated remote here. Now that's important when you're actually performing the MIDI mapping. After you've done the MIDI mapping, you can put it back on. But whilst performing the MIDI mapping, it's important that this is off. Otherwise, when you're pushing buttons on the launch pad or another controller, Live is actually going to take the physical MIDI note of the button press rather than the output from Gridlock. And what you're trying to do here is map the output from Gridlock. So that's very important. The next part of the configuration is actually the Gridlock configuration. If I hit the I.O. button here, don't need to worry about the rest of the controls down here. On the top left we've got MIDI input and on the top right we've got MIDI output. At the moment these aren't displaying much and that's because we actually need Java running in order to be able to access these MIDI ports directly. So Java isn't loaded automatically with the latest versions of Gridlock. You actually have to click this down here. It just means the gridlock will load a bit quicker if you're not using Java. If I was to save the set now, then this would be saved in the on state and Java would automatically be loaded the next time. So it's only initial time if you're using Java or any of the Java functions that you need to enable it. So I should now have got a full list here and I can see my MIDI in and MIDI out. So this is the MIDI input to gridlock. So that is going to be coming out of live. So I will actually want the MIDI out here. And this is the output from gridlock going to live. Now these two indicators have lit green here to show that we've successfully opened those MIDI ports. Now for the purpose of demonstration and debugging, I'm also going to check these two boxes here which will trace the MIDI input and output to the max window. So I'm just going to open that up as well. Okay, so now we'll be able to see MIDI input and output being received from Gridlock. Now normally I'd suggest setting up the MIDI mappings yourself for which keys you want MIDI mapped or whatever, but there is a MIDI default button here which will just give us a load of MIDI defaults set up so that we can just quickly demonstrate and play around with these things. So as you can see on the HUD, um, the matrix is now mapped to CC controls for 13, channel 13, 1 to 64. So I'll have a look at that in a second. And if I go to the Sliders, which I'm also going to map, you can see that we've got CC15128 on the top. 
So I'm going to start off mapping a couple of the sliders. So I'm going to press one of the sliders there. You can see here now that we are sending MIDI out, MIDI 15 CC1, value 127, take it down to the bottom. So we can see what we're sending out. And if I now put live into MIDI map mode, I'm going to select a volume control there and I'm going to press and we can see that we've got 15 one there which is correct because that's what we've got this to. I'm going to map the other one here as well to this control and we have 15 two. So I'm going to come out of MIDI mode now and you can see I'm moving the faders and live is correctly updating the two faders and we also have MIDI feedback you can see that if I move the faders then gridlock updates correctly and it's receiving the information we can see the counts going on down here so I can switch back to matrix mode one of the things that's been introduced in the latest version of gridlock now actually is that the shift button is momentary so I'm holding it down there and releasing it but I've also enabled this as a toggle now, so I can quickly just flick that. I'm now in shift mode. I can move around anywhere and then come out of shift mode now. So I'm just going to take a couple of buttons here. I'm going to go back into MIDI mode and I'm going to select this. And I'm going to select this and you can see that we've got MIDI mapping there. Come out of MIDI mode. And again, I'm pressing buttons on the launch pad to turn the mutes on and off and if I change them on here then the feedback goes back to gridlock as well. If you want to have multiple controllers just select the same configuration as here and each controller will send information and receive information from live. I'm just quickly gonna load up the config screen here. So this was a change made some time ago but if you're not aware of it then we can actually Put our own parameter names in now so I can go and put mute hash one maybe the hash splits it over multiple lines if we've got a multi-line display which we have on the HUD here so I'm going to put mute hash two in there for instance and then send that across and I can close that down now and if I go into shift mode and then I select display names and come out then I'm displaying an actual name rather than the controller number now so if you want to do your mappings and name everything nicely then you can do that as well a couple of other quick examples here I've just popped into the config and I've changed these two buttons to be four ways actually so I'm now going to MIDI map those to a couple of sends Maybe not labeled them correctly, but it doesn't really matter. So I've now got those doing a four way step of two sends. You can see them going through on gridlock, changing the values, and again, changing those will update the colors on gridlock. And then if I move into bend mode, we can also map some of those. I've changed bend mode to be horizontal here because I'm going to map these to a couple of pans. So if we select that pan and choose that one, and then this pan and choose that one, and then come out, and you can see now that we're, we're changing our pan positions with those. And as expected, updating these will reflect there as well. Okay, so that's the basics of MIDI mapping in and out of Ableton Live using the latest versions of Gridlock. As I say, if you do have 0.3.9, then you can use SLM to do the same, and I'll be putting a video up about that shortly. Any questions on this, then please feel free to ask on the forum at forum.sigabort.co.